there's a major myth out there that opioid and opiate withdrawals are not lethal, and that is not true at all. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the dangers of quitting opioids cold turkey. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I typically do is take a look at the YouTube community or pop culture or just the world in general and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. But something I'm very passionate about is treating mental health as well as addiction recovery. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about the truth about opioid withdrawal and how dangerous it can be to quit cold turkey. So who am I? If you're new here, you're like, who the hell is this guy talking about opioid withdrawal? I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. My primary drug of choice was prescription opioids. Um, on June 23rd of this year, I'll have seven years clean, no alcohol, no drugs. I relapsed multiple times before I finally got clean, and I've been through withdrawal multiple times. Aside from that, I have worked with literally thousands of drug addicts and alcoholics through my experience in 12-step programs, as well as my personal experience working at an inpatient drug and alcohol treatment center, all right? But anyways, <clears throat> first let's talk about why? Why on earth would anybody quit cold turkey when there are so when there is so much access to medical resources? Like we live in 2019. We have never had the medical technology in history to help people coming off of opioids. So why on earth would anybody try to do this cold turkey? Well, speaking from my own experience, I get it. I get why people would want to do this cold turkey. And there's a variety of reasons. One of them is, just to help you get into the mindset of somebody trying to quit cold turkey, this substance has had such a kung fu grip on your life and you have been a slave to this substance. It is like a war in your own mind. It is like a battlefield and you wanna beat this thing. You wanna defeat this thing. You want to show this substance that you have more power than it does. So one of the one of the things that people will do is they will try to quit cold turkey to prove to themselves that they are in control and they are no longer a slave to this substance, all right? So at the end of the day, because I'm gonna talk about another reason why people quit cold turkey, is, is this, a lot of this has to do with our pride and our ego, all right? We have something to prove. We wanna show who we are and we are not a victim of this substance any longer, all right? But going off of that into pride and ego, sometimes we wanna quit cold turkey because we wanna wear that stuff like a badge of honor, right? We wanna be able to tell the world, like I see this all the time. I see this, like you're probably gonna see this in the comment section. Like, I'll make you a bet. I guarantee in the comment section there's gonna be people in here trying to act like a badass because they quit cold turkey right like we want to show the whole world oh i did a cold turkey you could do a cold turkey all right and like here's the thing like i want to get this through to you i want to make this very clear like us drug addicts and alcoholics, like we don't have a convention once a year uh, where we hand out awards and like there's no like prize for like the most badass drug addict who quit cold turkey and went through withdrawals on their own. Like there is no award, so like quit trying to impress people, okay? Like it just blows my mind, but that again, that's part of our ego and we wanna be able to like flaunt it to other people. Like listen, we get it, we understand you're super cool, but you'll still be just as cool if you get help for your addiction and recovering from withdrawal, all right? So <laughs> now, leading into this, like I'm actually somebody who quit cold turkey and did a cold turkey detox, and it wasn't by choice. I've talked about this in some other videos about Suboxone. This was something that happened to me because I lied. I lied to the doctors about how much I was using, how bad my withdrawal symptoms were, because I was trying to be cool. And um, not only was I trying to be cool, but I didn't want them knowing how bad my addiction was. And that's a whole nother story about how I was, I didn't even want to get clean and sober. I was trying to make them think that my addiction wasn't that bad so I can go back and relapse later. That's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But anyways, this is extremely dangerous. And the only reason that I'm alive today was because of the medical attention I was getting. So, 
Again, it is a myth that opioid withdrawal cannot kill you, okay? And here's the thing, like, while the actual symptoms of opioid withdrawal cannot kill you, the other damage you have done to your body can kill you, okay? And let me explain why that is. Long-term substance uh, abuse takes its toll on your body, okay? Things going on inside of you that you cannot see. When I got clean almost seven years ago, I had congestive heart failure, okay? My heart was the size of my lung. It was huge. I had a 10% chance of living. Less than 25% of my heart was working, okay? It was not pumping properly. And I was only 26 years old when this happened. Now, symptoms of opioid withdrawal, okay? Follow me on this little journey here, okay? Symptoms of opioid withdrawal, can increase your blood pressure and heart rate, okay? So when you take increased blood pressure and heart rate and you combine that with heart issues because of the damage you've done to your heart because of your long-term substance abuse, this combination can kill you, okay? So while I did deal with opiate withdrawals, like all of those symptoms, like um, the flu-like symptoms, like the aches, the pains, the puking and the stuff coming out of the other end, the, the cold sweats, the shakes, I dealt with all of that. Luckily, because the doctors were treating my congestive heart uh, failure, like I'm not even like BSing you. I was 26 years old and when they released me from the cardiac critical care unit, I must have been on at somewhere between like eight to 10 heart medications, okay? Like I was taking heart medications like I was some like geriatric like old dude. That is how much damage drugs and alcohol did to my heart. So the only reason, the only reason that I'm sitting here alive today was because I had medical assistance to treat my heart, okay? But there are many other people who when they quit cold turkey, they are not getting any type of medical assistance and people can die from this. There have actually been more and more news stories about how prisons are starting to, prisons and in, in even just like, um, like jails, they're starting to have to treat people's opioid withdrawal in prison because a lot of times what happens is somebody gets picked up off a, dr uh, a, a drug charge, they get put into a cell and then they have to quit cold turkey. But there have been stories of people dying in jail because of opioid withdrawal, because they were not getting treated for it, okay? So if you are somebody out there or you know somebody out there who is thinking about quitting cold turkey, do not do it. There are so many resources. And I'm going to speak about the United States specifically. That's where I'm located. That's where a large portion of my audience is. So I cannot speak for other parts of the world. I know I have an international audience, so please, please do some research in your area and see how you can get help um, or leave comments down below and let other people know how they can get help in your area. Like somebody left a comment the other day that in Australia, Suboxone is free. And Suboxone is a medication that helps trick the brain into thinking that you're still using opioids and then you gradually taper off. But here in the United States, there are plenty of options. The first one is, if you have health insurance, find a treatment center, okay? Like, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing uh, an inpatient treatment center. Like the one I was working at, we had an inpatient treatment center that was also um, qualified to do detox because we had doctors and nurses on staff so we can do medication. I highly recommend that and the reason why is because Detox is the only first step on this recovery journey. You typically need like uh, uh, therapy and other resources to avoid relapsing in the future. So that is my first suggestion. If you have insurance or you have the money for it, get inpatient along with detox. Now, there are also separate detox facilities that do both inpatient and outpatient, okay? So an outpatient detox center is basically, you go to the doctor maybe one to three times a week and they're monitoring your symptoms but you still go back and forth from home to the doctor so they can check up on you and they will prescribe you the medications to help you get off of opioids uh stuff like suboxone and then there's medications like naltrexone and vivitrol that help with the cravings but um things like suboxone or i believe subutex 
uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, one of these can also help with the cravings as well. So you can do outpatient detox or what I did way back in the day, I did an inpatient detox, okay? So the difference between in, inpatient detox and treatment is inpatient detox, I was only there for, I believe, four days. Basically, I was in there, I was in a facility where I was sleeping, and they were helping me get medically stable so I could then leave, and then they prescribed me medications for when I left there. All right, if you do not have insurance, I'm going to link a website down below called SAMHSA. This is a government-funded website that shows you different um, detox facilities or treatment centers in your area that are government funded. So even if you do not have health insurance or if you have like Medicare, it will you can like set up the filters and everything and it will show you which ones you can get into. Now, one of the issues and one of the reasons why you need to get out there and vote and pay attention to what the hell is going on in this country is, there aren't that many government funded facilities and sometimes the wait can be insanely long. Like here in Las Vegas, not only have we shut down a bunch of government funded detox centers, but the ones that are still open, sometimes the waiting list can be weeks, okay? So look into that, check it out, see what is available. Um, there are some doctors who have private practices who do kind of like outpatient detox, so research that as well. Um, but the last thing, the last resort is go to an emergency room. If you're trying to get off of drugs, okay, go to an emergency room because like, for example, I didn't have health insurance, but I went to an emergency room, okay? And they have to take you in. They pretty much have to take you in and they will get you medically stable. All right, and that is better and that is safer than trying to quit this thing cold turkey. Okay, so as somebody in recovery and as somebody who has witnessed a lot of death, I felt like it is important to discuss this because there are many videos out there on YouTube of people quitting cold turkey and like documenting their withdrawal and everything. And I don't want you to think that that is a safe option because it definitely isn't, all right? So down in the comment uh, or in the description below and in the pinned comment, I will provide some resources so you can look. And again, if you are from different parts of the world and you know of resources in your area, like make sure to leave it down in the comments below so everybody can kind of take a look at it, benefit from it and get educated on what can help them overcome their addiction to opioids or opiates, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to support what I'm doing here and get your name up on the credits and get involved in our monthly Q&A where you have direct access to me, ask me whatever you want, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.